Hey, what's up, everybody? It is episode number 736 of Let There Be Talk. Welcome to the show. It is February, what, 12th, the day after the Super Bowl. God damn. Did you guys watch the game? Holy shit. 49ers lost, but what a fucking game, huh? Oh, my God. I did not see the halftime uh, show, not because I'm I'm not like a Usher hater or whatever, but I was, uh, you know, I headed out to get a, a coffee at halftime. <laughs> they said it was going to be a 45 minute halftime. I go, perfect time to go out and get a coffee and then come back in. I was going to do the podcast last night. But after the 49ers lost, I was like, oh, spoiler alert. If you haven't watched the game yet, <laughs> they, they lost. But what a drag. Anyway, that game was fantastic. And, uh, you know, the Super Bowl, what a fucking uh, fiasco that is. I was watching some stuff. Some people bought up two, like, Diet Cokes in the 16-ounce bottle. At, uh, at at a hotel or whatever, it was like thirty three dollars. <laughs> they fucking they're just robbing everybody out there. Super Bowl weekend. I was there the week before and it was all mellow, you know. And then you go this weekend and they just surge charge like a a uh, Uber from the airport to the hotel, which is seriously like about a mm, seven minute ride, hundred dollars. And mine was. Uh, $21 just a week before insane it is a uh it is a shit show man to go to the Super Bowl in a good city I don't know what it was in LA last year I think the Super Bowl was there last year yeah so far and uh I don't know what the uh the upcharge was but I uh, you know I know Vegas was ready to do some robbing everybody's trying to fill the pockets since COVID, man, we got to make up for COVID. It's been a few years. Let's keep robbing people. <laughs> anyway, what a fucking game. Hats off to the 49ers. Man, they look so fucking good and they just couldn't, uh, it just couldn't, you know, end it. They just could not end it. But this team has some weapons and they will be back next year, hopefully. And uh, Purdy will just get better and better. What a story. If he would have won the Super Bowl, oh, my God. From going the last picked in the uh, draft, like number 276, to the Super Bowl. And, uh, yeah, man, there it is. Super Bowl 58 is in the fucking books. And, uh, yeah, I was bummed. That's the thing. Like I wasn't watching football for years, so I had no heartstrings. Now over the last, I don't know, four years or so, or the last time the Niners lost to Kansas City was when I was like, yeah. And there I was yesterday. As soon as they lost, I immediately left the uh, Super Bowl party I was at, grabbed Gertie, went down the stairs, went home, went to bed, nine o'clock, just bummed. What an adrenaline ride, though. That fucking game was crazy. I mean, fumbles, interceptions, 57-yard field goals, breaking records. It was crazy. And, uh, yeah, there it is. Anyway, how are you guys? Dog, what are you doing over there, Gertie? Gertie just woke up from her nap. How are you guys? We uh, got a lot to dive in today. It's a, a solo episode. So uh, glad you're here. And uh, thanks for tuning in the last few weeks. Just incredible guests. We had uh, Shane Torres, the uh, comedian, good friend of mine. We had um, Steve Bai. We had Joe Bonamassa. And we had the great Josh Homme. So it's been a great, great month. And uh, thank you, like I always said, for tuning in. Patreon is going to have a bonus episode this week. Also, I'm tweaking the Patreon a little bit. You're going to be able to watch the uh, Patreon uh, episodes with no ads. So I'll be 
offering that up. Uh, you can watch it ad free if you are on my Patreon. Oh, which by the way, I want to give a shout out to some of the new Patreoners. And there will be a bonus episode this week. Tyler Fox, welcome aboard. Cecily J, Kenny Abel, Lisa Haney, and Steve Ronan. Thank you for joining up. Muchas gracias, as they say down in Cabo Wabo. Um, anyway, those are the new Patreoners. And uh, let me see here. I got a lot of fucking, I think it's like 125 bonus episodes. Oh, no. It's 152 bonus episodes on Patreon. So you want to catch up on all kinds of back episodes of uh, Solo Dale Ray. Go ahead and check that out. Thank you for joining the Patreon. Let's get right into the news of the day. Today is Monday, and of course, ACDC has finally, <clears throat> excuse me, announced their tour dates. Let me get this up here real quick. And of course, I've known about it for a while, but I didn't want to uh, spoil it. I knew who the bass player was for about three weeks. I didn't want to give that away. And I will give it uh, get into my thoughts here on the bass player selection and uh, talk to you a little bit about that. Here it is. So, so far, only the European dates have been announced, and it's 21 of them, it looks like. It's all over Europe. You got Italy, Spain, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland, England, Slovakia, Belgium, France, Ireland. That's all this summer. Interesting thing about the ACDC uh, tour announcement was it didn't really say like celebrating 50 years. It didn't say farewell tour. It didn't say this is it, any of that. So that was kind of interesting to me. Let me go to the website real quick because I just don't know how ACDC uh, is going to keep going unless Angus's idea is to keep getting younger guys to play the, you know, the role of the other guys. <clears throat> who knows? Eventually, um, you know, who, even another singer. Who who knows? Because um, if after they do this run, and let's say they do the states, which they will do the states, I know that. By then, it'll be a, another year. And Brian will be uh, way older. And then Angus will be older, obviously. And um, I don't know if they're just going to, in an ACDC fashion, just kind of disappear like they do everything. Keep it all mystique um, and, uh, and just, you know, disappear. And there it is. You're like, what happened to ACDC? You don't hear it, you know? I, I don't know. But they did not say that this is the farewell tour. They didn't say 50-year anniversary tour, which it is the 50-year anniversary of ACDC. None of that. I'm looking at it right now. So I don't know. Always a uh, mystery with ACDC, which keeps it cool, I think. It keeps it uh, really wild. I think one day somebody will come out um, who knows? Maybe uh, Brian will do a uh, a real documentary or something of the behind the scenes. Now, nobody can do any of that now. You'd be fired and there's all kinds of NDAs you have to sign, stuff like that. But um, it's always a mystery with that band. And uh, it does make it cool because you're like, well, wait a minute. They just dropped the tour dates. They don't say anything they say power up that was the record that they were promoting when they did the podcast a few years ago and uh you know i i i don't know but i will tell you this uh congrats to chris cheney on the bass and i can understand what they're going for here in the uh other positions because uh there were there were thoughts people were coming at me nonstop. it's gonna be duff mckagan 
It's like, no, nah, man. Now, look, they had Axel fill in, and they kind of needed that to a, 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 a name guy to keep the, um, you know, the ticket sales. So people don't go, I want my money back. Brian's not there. They go, Axel, oh, that might be cool. And they go, a super rock star. But when it comes to the other guys, you can't have like a, a Duff McKagan or say, um, you know, any kind of other superstar type of bass player up there. You need to have guys that are almost like uh, a thick blend of camouflage up there. Because I, I said this a couple of days ago to somebody, as much as I fucking worship Cliff Williams, 98% of the people that love the song Shook Me All Night Long don't even know who the people are in the band. So the more that you keep it in that type of flavor of just putting you know, Matt Luge up there and, and Chris Cheney. Now I know Chris Cheney and a lot of people in the LA music uh, scene know Chris Cheney because he is a super, superstar bass player and always one of the go-to guys uh, for studio and those big kind of rock jams like the Royal Machines and Camp Freddy and all of that. And I've known him for years. He grew up in the Bay Area, he was really good friends with my buddy Heath, who worked at uh, Real Guitars. And, you know, he played with Alanis Morissette. And uh, I would see him all the time all over town. Great player and, uh, you know, solid human. So you got to get a guy that's a killer player. And then you got to get a guy who can, you know, not overplay. You don't want to get a fucking flea up there, you know, fucking those about to rock. <laughs> you got to get a guy who can lay it down, who looks good, who's not fucking, you know, 30 years old. The band's fucking 90. Can't have some awkward looking young dude up there. And you can't have some old burnout tumbleweed out of shape guy because, you know, they're going to be doing three hour shows. You can't have some. This guy used to be in Fog Hat. Now he's in ACDC. Uh, but, he, you know, he's got a drinking problem, but he'll be he'll be OK out on the tour. We'll watch after him. You know, this it's got to be a fucking pro dude, almost like a robot just slips into that spot, stands in front of the SVTs, lays down the fucking groove of live wire, you know, do, 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 just back there pedaling it. Same with Matt Luz. People are like, well, who's this guy? You couldn't get some star guy's name. Um, now that I've thought about it over the last couple of weeks, because it starts to become what I think Angus will eventually end up doing, hopefully would be Angus Young and friends where I've said it before, where he just tours and he has like a group of people, like 10 guys, and they rotate in throughout the night. You get to see like, you know, Dave Grohl and, uh, you know, uh, Brad Wilk or a, a uh, you know, Josh Freeze on the, rotate through the drums. You get to see different dudes on the, uh, on the bass and vocals, different singers. I don't know, but... I'll tell you this right now. Chris Chaney is a great fucking choice. He is uh, the perfect uh, mini, you know, well-respected in the musical uh, world and will just blend in up there to where people will just be like, oh, I don't know. They sound great, you know? So there it is. Hats off to that. Um, no U.S. dates. The U.S. dates will be coming. Uh, guarantee that the people ask me if I will see uh, ACDC. I am very happy now that I went to power trip because that will be my last ACDC show um, in the books from 78 to 2003. Uh, that's my ACDC chapter right there. And I'm, so happy I got to uh, see Cliff Williams' last gig. I also saw Malcolm on his last tour. 
I saw Bon on his last tour. And uh, I've seen Phil Rudd on his last tour, which, by the way, we're putting to rest finally, which I've said it over and over and over. It was definitely not a passport issue with Phil Rudd playing Power Up or, uh, yeah, a Power Trip, Power Up. Just like I said, man. Those guys have enough money and lawyers. They could have got Phil Rudd in anywhere. If you can get Phil Rudd into Canada to do a record, Canada is the worst. If you just have a drunk driving, you can't fucking get into Canada without paying all kinds of fees. So it was not that, definitely. And it's definitely a uh, proof um, now because there they are doing all of Europe and there's no Phil Rudd. I, I already knew it wasn't that because, like I said, when you have that amount of money and power, you can get anybody in the States. Uh, no problem, especially these days. Anybody can get into the States these days. But um, so there's that last mystery of Phil Rudd. I guess he's fired again or, you know, he didn't quit. But when I did interview Phil Rudd, if you watched the interview, I wasn't quite sure how his health was as I interviewed him, you know? So I think it's a health thing or maybe, um, maybe there's some uh, physical things like Cliff Williams saying he had some physical and mental stuff that he didn't want to tour anymore. Maybe Phil is not saying it, but maybe he, his fucking hands or who knows, shoulders, drummers, man, they're all fucked up. We don't know, we never will know, but uh, it'll eventually get leaked out somehow, or maybe he'll get cuckoo and get online and be like, they fucking burned me. Ah, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, there it is. That puts the, uh, puts the Phil Rudd thing, unfortunately, to rest. He is the greatest drummer of ACDC, and it's funny how people try to argue that like Chris Slade should have been back in. That's not going to happen. And, um, and then also uh, what's the guy's name from fucking uh, right. He uh, he's not going to be back in either. Cause that, that ship sailed a million years ago. And uh, you know, so there it is, the ACDC tour dates for so far, Europe are out. Are you excited to go? Uh, let me know. Hit me up on the uh, Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Uh, people say, should I go? If you haven't seen ACDC, fuck yeah, you should go. You should go see any band if you haven't seen a band and you've always wanted to see them. That's what I say, man. Get out there and see these bands before they go away. But, um, you know, if you've seen ACDC a bunch, and maybe you're, they're, they're, look, ACDC has insane fans. There's some Instagram accounts that are just going crazy, like I'm going to 10 dates and stuff. So, um, you know, just for me at this point in my life, 50, 58 years old, I'm going to just close that chapter and take the incredible memories of uh, Power Trip and uh, and a thank you to ACDC for a million years of unbelievable fucking uh, entertainment concerts uh, are are just embedded in my brain and just incredible happy memories. So I'm good with my retirement from seeing ACDC live unless I'm up there for some weird reason singing. That will be it, power trip. Okay, some more thoughts. We had the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, announcements. Uh, the inductions for 2024 came out a couple of days ago. Some great names on there. Let me let me fucking get into them right here. And uh, I do not waste time anymore. Like I said last year, I'm not going to waste any more time going. This isn't rock and roll. This is bullshit, man. man, man. Fucking get over it. Either watch it or don't watch it. 
Nobody cares the week after they get inducted anyway. You don't need, you don't hear anyone ever talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ever except the day they make the announcement of the nominees. And then you don't hear shit ever. If the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame didn't have any inductees each year or nominees, you would never, ever, ever hear about it. It would just be something you'd check out if you were on vacation for some reason in Cleveland. It's the only time people talk about it. And it's also really uh, one of the uh, couple times a year when I just see full racism come out. People are like, God, oh, fucking, oh, I'm a fucking ice cube. Oh. <laughs> fucking. What they're saying is like, yeah, rock and roll Hall of Fame should be rock and roll. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You mean the fucking, what about Chuck Berry, you know? Fucking, you know, he's rock and roll, 100%. And, you know, he played technically like blues. And then what about all the blues guys? They're rock and roll. I don't know. It's, it's fucking funny. Let's look at it. Here we go. Mary J. Blige. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put her on the, on this list, not because she's R and B or, or hip hop or soul or whatever you want to call it. I just, uh, I would not, uh, you know, vote for her or Mariah Carey. I vote for people first that influence those people. So cool and the gangs on there. 100%. Uh, Sade, 100%. Before Mariah Carey and Mary J. Blige, Sade has to go in. It's like my point I always say. Devo, before fucking Nine Inch Nails. And uh, Kraftwerk, before Nine Inch Nails. Uh, that's, just, that's just how it's got to go. You got to put the fucking... You got to put the original originator in there before you put the influencer. Anyway. Um, yeah. So share. Hell yes. Hell yes. Put share in there for sure. That, that woman is pure rock and roll. Had her own TV show, Sonny and Cher show, had a ton of hits. Uh Killed it in the acting game. And, and then I had a huge comeback in the 80s with massive fucking videos and hits. And Cher is rock and roll, man. She's got a son who's rock and roll. Oh, my God. You got to put Cher in. Dave Matthews. Uh, I'm not a Dave Matthews fan. But Dave Matthews definitely should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's been selling millions of records and touring at the highest level for years and years. And, uh, you know, he, he definitely is rock and roll, and he definitely deserves to be in there. Uh, Eric B. and Rakim, 100% ground floor of hip-hop, which I've said it many, many times, hip-hop is rock and roll, the old stuff especially, uh, you know, the gangster rap, that shit is fucking like metal. And, uh, you know, Eric B. and Rakim, these guys are uh, some of the originators. So, yeah, you got to put them in. Now, here we go. Let's get into this. I can't even fucking believe that Peter Frampton is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, look, I'll support your argument over like, Hey, man, Mariah Carey shouldn't be in there. What you mean is Mariah Carey shouldn't be in there before Peter Frampton. Because don't get it wrong. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has just become like a music Hall of Fame is what it really is now. You know, rock and roll was the popular term and popular music for many, many, many years, but now it's not as high on the totem pole. So eventually they might even just change this thing to the Music Hall of Fame, uh, the name. And then it would still have those complainers, man, this is bullshit. 
Anyway, Peter Frampton. How the fuck is Peter Frampton not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the first five years? Are you kidding me? Do you feel like I do? Oh, my God. I mean, Peter Frampton, his body of work is just unbelievable, you know? And and for him not to be in, I couldn't even believe he wasn't in yet. Foreigner, 100%. Foreigner is so fucking good and underrated. Also, they... uh polluted the brand over the last few years by having no original members out there touring. But man, you could not turn your radio on every day, FM dial or Sirius XM without hearing Foreigner. The number of fucking hits that this band has is unreal, man. I absolutely love Foreigner. And, uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine, right? Like a foreigner so great. He's like, oh, they're no good. I was like, what are you crazy? Foreigner is fucking amazing. Cold as ice, double vision, foreigner four, the first record, all of them loaded with hits. Pure fucking solid rock and roll. Just incredible. Foreigner, 100% should be in there immediately. Which would be interesting, too, if they do get nominated. Do not bring any of those, you know, guys up from the last five years. That's fucking ridiculous. Get the OG guys, Lou Graham, Mick Jones, all the OG guys, and bring them in that are alive still. And give them the proper glory. These guys wrote some amazing fucking songs, man. And if you haven't listened to Foreigner in a while, do yourself a favor. Just go fire up, you know, Foreigner Greatest Hits, whatever. <clears throat> Voice is trash today from fucking screaming and yelling at the 49er game yesterday. So my picks. Okay, then we got Jane's Addiction. Great fucking band. First two albums are just mind boggling. Cool in the gang. Lenny Kravitz, slam dunk, slam dunk. Lenny Kravitz all fucking day long. I remember when Lenny Kravitz came out with uh, Let Love Rule record. It was uh, Tom Petty had just released that Into the Great Wide Open. He had Lenny Kravitz open the tour. And man, I was just blown away how great Lenny was. Mr. Cab Driver, Let Love Rule. I mean, that first record is so fucking... Let me get the fucking... Let, hold on. Let me get the tracks on this fucking thing. Lenny Kravitz. Which, by the way, he's got a new record coming out. And maybe one day I'll get him on a fucking podcast, man. It'd be so great to have Lenny Kravitz on. His, his record, Mama Said, 1991. He should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just on that record alone. But uh, here it is right here. Sitting on top of the world. Great. Let love rule. Freedom train. I'm on the freedom train. Come on, dance on the freedom train. My precious love. I build this garden for us. Oh, fear. Does anybody out there even care? Mr. Cab Driver, Rosemary, B. Oh, my God. Blues for Sister Someone. Empty Hands. Flower Child. This record is a masterpiece. His next record, Mama Says, is a masterpiece. And uh, it, it is insane how great he is and how uh, long he's been churning out, just crushing rock, killing it on the guitar. I remember seeing him uh, in uh, Germany. I was out on the GNR Illusions tour and the bill was uh, Lenny Kravitz, Black Crows, Faith No More, um, GNR. Lenny Kravitz was on the uh, Mama Said record. Faith No More was on the Angel Dust record. And uh, Black Crows, I can't remember. I think they might have been on Southern Harmony. What a fucking day of rock, that lineup. Anyway, Lenny Kravitz, 
home run. He's in immediately with me. Oasis, 100% Oasis, immediately. Man, I love how uh, Liam immediately went to his Instagram. Fuck the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which uh, <clears throat> I would almost have been shocked if he didn't say that. You know, he's got to say that just to act like, you know, I don't care, which means he does care when he goes on and says that. Fuck the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You'll be there. Who are you fooling? If you get in, you will be there. Uh, Sinead O'Connor, which, by the way, I fucking love Oasis. Sinead O'Connor uh, passed away. Rest in peace. Passed away last year. I'm not a Sinead O'Connor. Um, I didn't listen to her. I'm not going to sit there and act like I did. Uh, I did see her a couple times over the years, uh, you know, on like big TV events and stuff, but that's basically all I really saw. A Tribe Called Quest. Um, you know, great, great, great Tribe Called Quest. Uh, definitely should be in, but I'm going to make my picks right here. I don't know how many get to go in. I should have looked that up, but I, for me, it would be Cher, Eric B. and Rakim, Foreigner, Peter Frampton, Jane's Addiction, Cool and the Gang, Lenny Kravitz, Oasis, oh, Chardet. And then Ozzy's there for solo, but look, those Ozzy solos records are fucking fantastic, but might have to let him in next year or something. He's already in with Black Sabbath. So let's get Chardet in, who I will tell you this right now, is one of the greatest of all time. And I've seen her live twice and her songwriting and her voice and everything about her knocks me the fuck out. And I listen to her weekly still to this day. She is unreal, which by the way, happy 82 birthday to Carol King over the weekend, 82. So there they are, the rock and roll nominees, 2024. Um, let me know in the uh on the social medias who you'd be uh wanting in. Cool and the gang is so fucking great. I was talking about last week, I was talking about uh Heat Wave, all of that music back then. Heat Wave, Cool and the Gang, Lakeside, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Curtis Mayfield. Uh, I mean, man, all of that stuff. I listen to still to this day. Cool and the gang is so fucking good, man. I mean, come on. What a fucking group. Oasis killer. There it is. Who would you want in the rock hall there? <clears throat> Let me know. And, uh, you know, give it, give it a shout in the social medias. Over uh, over the weekend, I've been uh, diving back into some uh, speaker madness. I've got to, I've had these DVLA speakers from France for I don't know about four years or so, and uh, they were really the the digital speaker that um, got me to uh, sell my records and my turntable and everything as I'm trying to get into this uh, minimalist uh, lifestyle. I'm almost there. I'm actually, I would say I'm about 90% there. I only have shit I really need other than my absurd collection of rock and roll t-shirts and <clears throat> rock and roll photography, which I'm trying to thin out, but I need to sell the photos. You know, they're, 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 fucking valuable and very cool photos. So I'm not just going to give them away or something because they were something, but I'm getting down to the minimalism life and it's feeling pretty good. 58 years old down to just uh, really what I need. I could even thin it out more, which I keep trying each year. I try to uh, thin it out, but I got these speakers DVLA because they were kind of the first digital streaming speaker uh, that blew my fucking mind. And as the streaming platforms got better, say Tidal and uh, Lossless on uh, Amazon and HD streaming, as the streaming gets better and better and better every year, uh, it made it easier to 
cut loose of the records. And man, was I addicted to uh, buying vinyl for a while. But then I'm never home. I'm always on the road doing comedy. And I was like, I got all these records. Uh, I'm not here to really put them on and just sit on the couch. Maybe if I was fucking, you know, 70 and retired and just chilling around the house. But I'm never chilling. I just, I can't chill. I've tried to chill. <laughs> I can't chill. So I sold them all because these DVLAs knocked me out. But the DVLAs, the thing is, they're built to be played fucking loud and with some uh, serious bass. The bass on them is unbelievable. I mean, you've never heard a bass on a speaker like this ever. It's just straight up like super hip hop. Just And, uh, you know, my one bedroom apartment uh, neighbors do not need the uh, sub, sub sound. So I'm starting to think about maybe sizing down a little bit just for something that sounds as good and um, but not crazy. I, I don't listen to loud music anymore either. I don't listen to my shit up on fucking six or seven or eight. I just put the music on around four or five and just chill out. My loud music days are over. You know, when I'm at a concert, those fucking earplugs are in. Another reason I, I'm winding down the concert time because I'm I'm trying to not hear the concert. <laughs> when I'm there, I'm like, man, I got these earplugs in. Do we got anything else? You know? So I started looking into uh, other speakers. Now, let me tell you, the DVOA is one of the greatest sounding speakers I've ever fucking heard. And you're streaming and you cannot believe it. And once you get addicted to the, um, the just, you know, streaming speakers, it's tough to not just go to it all the time. And there's all kinds of good low end stuff. I've got a little Marshall streaming speaker i bring on the road with me it's like looks like a cube of butter i just any hotel room that thing comes out of the bag and i turn it on and i really love those uh apple round ones those uh those kind of round pods forget what that's called but those sound great so i started diving in but i'm looking for something that is high end you know old delray likes the high end shit and, um, you know, the stuff that where people go like, I can't believe you fucking spent that amount of money on that. It's like, yeah, but I don't smoke cigarettes or drink booze. So I'm fucking good. I don't do drugs. So this is where I spend my money on a nice pair of speakers. So I looked into it over the weekend and there's some newer streaming speakers out that I didn't know about. <clears throat> now, DVLA is uh, they have they have three different sizes. They have a small kind of egg, then they have a big egg, and the big egg comes in two different wattages, like 100 watts or, you know, it's not, a, sorry, it's not wattage, it's dB. One is 98 dB, the other one is 108 dB. 108 is fucking cranking. But my thing is, I found that the 98 dB you know, not that you're, it's not about volume. It, to me, it's just about space when the music comes out, how they, how it sounded like these 108 ones. Once you have that, you're fucked because the aura of the sound coming out of the speakers is so incredible. You're like, I can't even believe how good this fucking sounds. So that's the DVOAs. And a lot of people say, would you recommend them? I've been recommending them for years, but there's a new, uh, there's a new fucking crushing speaker in town that I like Bowers and Wilkins formation duo. And I was talking to a guy um, Saturday about the speakers. I was in a high end audio shop in West Hollywood. And he had these Bowers and Wilkins and they look fucking cool. They look like Darth Vader. You know, you're looking at it 
<clears throat> and the simplicity of these streaming speakers are great. You download an app for his DVOA or Bowers and Wilkins or, or, you know, the other one I was looking at was Kef LS50. And then all your streaming uh, platforms are in the app. So if you're using Tidal or if you're using iTunes or Amazon or any of those, there it is. And you're just playing right out of the app. And some of the apps are way fucking better than the other apps, the companies. Like, you know, some you can adjust the treble, bass, and you can roll off all kinds of EQ and shit on them. The DVLA one's pretty uh, basic. You can either turn the bass off or on, not all the way off, but what they call night mode. So you're not getting, uh, you know, destroy your neighbor's bass. So I looked into this one here, the Bowers and Wilkins. And they're like five grand for the pair, but I immediately found them for thirty five hundred on on the internet. And uh, they are, let's see, how tall are they? Like fifteen inches tall by twelve deep and seven wide, and they look really cool. And um, they support AirPlay, Bluetooth. Rune ready, Spotify, Connect, and uh, and Wi-Fi, and they, you know you're just streaming right out of your Wi-Fi for the highest. Um, you know you don't want to be Bluetoothed. You want to be streaming out of the Wi-Fi. This is all kind of nerdy shit, but that's how you're going to get the highest resolution. So I've been checking out these, um, these uh, Bowers and Wilkins Formation Duo. And I might be making a switch because I don't play music, like I said, loud. And I think that the DVOA, you need to get them up around four or five to push air and to really give them their glory. You know, you don't want to get a speaker that's made to turn up to 108 dB and you're only playing them at like 20 dB or something. You're not using the speaker so why have them now i have not made this decision yet and and when i uh look into that i dive way deep i watch a million fucking videos and no one seems to uh have the answers of the dvla versus the bowers and wilkins formation no, nobody has a review of them side by side, except for a couple dudes that are like in Hong Kong and they're not speaking English. I'm like, shit. And I went down to the shop and they had both, but they did not have the DVOA set up in stereo. Two of them. They only had one. So I'm listening to two Bowers and Wilkins against one DVOA. And, uh, you know, it's really tough because the DVOA sounds fucking great. They're heavy as fuck. They're like a fucking bowling ball, which is crazy. Um, anyway, so I will let you know, but uh, if anybody has used uh, these Bowers and Wilkins formation duo or this other one, now I have not heard this one in person yet, Kef, K-E-F, the LS50. They look cool as fuck too. They're like a square with an orange cone. If anybody's used those, get get at me on the social medias or uh, hit me on Instagram, DM, and let me know because, um, you know, speakers are fucking, it's nuts with speakers because you just, if you make the wrong move, you're like, ah, I got the wrong fucking speakers. Or you could be that person that just buys the speakers and you never think about it again. I don't know. You know, but uh, the DVOAs have been pretty fucking killer. But man, I'm just not going to be playing loud music. My ears are trashed. I'm old. <laughs> I just like, I like low, super clean sounding streams. So let me know. Those are the three that I've uh, narrowed it down to that I can tell online that are high end streaming speakers. And which, by the way, uh, 
Bowers and Wilkins makes one that's even more money, but they're like tall, big speakers. I don't want tall. I'm talking about like bookshelf type of, you know, apartment speakers. So uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Got some shows coming up. Live shows coming up, my friends. Um, this week in Palm Springs with Bill Burr. We're going to be out there two nights. We're going to uh, dive into the modernism weekend. Go check out Elvis Presley's honeymoon house, the Kreisel, uh that Kreisel built. We're going to see the Frank Sinatra house and do some comedy. And then we're off to Portland, Oregon, Trailblazers Arena and Rogers Arena in Vancouver. And then Salt Lake City, where the jazz play, whatever that arena is called. So check that out. Also, tickets on sale for me, headlining Minneapolis at the Acme Comedy uh, Company. Cannot wait to do that. Please get your tickets in advance for these headlining shows because it it takes the stress off of me. I keep promoting them. And then I'm going to be at the Comedy Fort in Fort Collins, Colorado, headlining, which would be great. And then the mic drop in uh, San Diego. All the tour dates are on DeanDelRay.com. Check that out. Tour dates. Get your tickets. Hope to see you out there. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, episodes brought to you by StandardAndStrange.com. My one-stop uh, denim, leather jacket, and boot shop. New York City, Berkeley, and New Mexico, or online, StandardAndStrange.com. Carrying all my favorite brands, Momotaro. Y2 Leathers, The Real McCoys, Buco, and uh, on and on and on, man. They got the best stuff there. Oh, I love them. That is the standardandstrange.com. Standardandstrange.com. Check them out on Instagram. Tell them I sent you. Okay. A couple more things and we'll get out of here. I appreciate you guys uh, joining me, like I said, every week. And uh, it means a lot to me. Over the uh, weekend, uh, speaking of shows, Bill Burr's doing the Hollywood Bowl. So uh, we took a little helicopter trip over to the Hollywood Bowl and just flew over it. It was so cool to fly over the Hollywood Bowl. A lot of people have never been to the Hollywood Bowl. And I will tell you this right now. It's one of the greatest venues in America. You got, you got Red Rocks. You got Hollywood Bowl. You have uh, <clears throat> the Gorge out there. I'm talking about outdoor uh, venues. The Gorge is fantastic out there in the uh, Seattle area. And Santa Barbara Bowl is fucking killer. There's nothing like outdoor rock and roll. I've said it before, man. Just seeing rock stars in the daylight, it's, it's really bizarre. But the venues are, just feel fun and festive. And you're just outdoors. There's something about it that always felt like, here comes the summer. We're going to see some fucking outdoor concerts. And the Hollywood Bowl has just been one of my favorites for years. I've seen so many amazing shows. I saw Eddie Van Halen's last show ever. Van Halen played their last show at the Hollywood Bowl. They started in Hollywood. They ended in Hollywood. Long live the great Eddie Van Halen. I saw Tom Petty's last show ever at the Hollywood Bowl. The great Lucinda Williams opened up. I saw Kraftwerk 3D at the Hollywood Bowl. You put on fucking 3D glasses and they put on this 3D show. It was insane. Uh, I just saw GNR there recently. Tons and tons of shows over my lifetime in there. Uh, Black Sabbath, Rival Sons. You know, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, but it is one of the greatest venues. It's a, of course, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to park because it was built in the fucking thirties or something when people were taking stage coaches to the concert, <laughs> pony rides. And uh, over the years, they've had to adapt to the over explosion of population in Los Angeles. But I feel they've done it pretty fucking good. You can park about a mile or two away and get in a shuttle bus and you're instantly at the, the venue. You can park um, 
like a half mile away in Hollywood and walk to it. And uh, I know people in LA walk. Oh, that's fucking dumb. I want to be let off right at the front and you better be here when I fucking come out instantly or I'm giving you a bad rating. <laughs> anyway, the Hollywood Bowl is spectacular. And so we flew over it in the copter and to really get to see it, man, just the houses around it, <clears throat> pretty fucking cool. And uh, and then we flew all over Malibu a couple of days ago. It's interesting I posted up the video, got a half million views, which was fucking wild. But uh, I always trip on those people that immediately just start throwing like uh, negativity and bad vibes and mojo at it. Like, oh man, you're going to fucking crash like Kobe. Yeah, you fucking guys up there, you're going to fucking go down. It's like, first of all, why would you say that to somebody or supposed to be a fan of like oh i just care man i don't want you in the helicopter man we need you around it's like dude i look out my window and i you know I, you know they there's probably like a hundred helicopters a day you maybe hear about a crash every fucking 10 years or something you know and these people act like the helicopter was made in somebody's backyard you know, on some fucking meth. I don't put together fucking, I'll put together myself fucking whirly bird. I'm gonna fucking get up there, man. I fucking, I know what I'm doing. I, I took fucking metal shop. I took some metal shop and I got fucking uh, internets and a couple good bumps. I'll put together fucking, uh, I got uh, some old shower curtains and uh, uh, some aluminum uh, railroad ties. I'm gonna make me a whirly bird. These things are fucking state of the art this ain't the fucking 30s you know they're state of the art shit goes down you know what else goes down fucking planes and you know what else goes down car crashes all fucking day all day in la all day in la all day in the world all day in the united states car crashes people dying in cars every day all day Nobody's getting on there going, dude, don't get in that car, man. Dude, you're dumb getting in that fucking car, man. You get you get in that fucking car and you're gonna fucking you're gonna fucking die. Nobody ever says that about a car. And people, more people die in cars than anything, I think. I didn't look up that fucking number, but I think it's cars and cancer is should be your fear. Helicopters, man, they're fucking scary and weird and fucking cool. You get up in it, you're like, this is insane. It's scary just because it's just so weird. You're fucking, you're just floating, man. It's it's wild. You're just like, Whoa. you know, and you, it, I can't describe the feeling, man. It's scary and exhilarating at the same time. And it's beautiful. You're just looking out there, man. You're just flying around like we're over the ocean. You're looking down. You're looking for great white sharks and shit out there. It's so fucking cool. You got to fucking quit acting like the helicopter is, like I said, some meth head's whirly bird. It, these things are fucking... The helicopter, they tear them down. They, they take them apart. I think it's like every 10,000 hours or something and rebuild them. They're like brand new every like fucking year. So anyway, quit throwing that fucking crazy shade on uh, helicopters. You know, it's fuck. Yeah. Some key dudes went down. Kobe fucking brutal. I'll never forget that. Stevie Ray Vaughn. Unbelievable. Bill Graham. But there's always a backstory when you look at the, the crash. You're like, oh, well, they shouldn't have been fucking flying. You know, fog, heavy storm, rain, uh, you know, shit like that. So, yeah, man, that's just my uh, little fucking heads up to you out there. Just, uh, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful fucking thing to be able to fly over the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, fuck, dude, I skydived. You know how much more insane that is than fucking helicopter flight? Skydive. I did it twice. 
I'll never do that again. At 58, I'm like, I'm not skydiving ever again. That was early on in life where I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm crazy. Let's go skydive after being up all night. Let's do that. <laughs> I'd never skydive now. Fuck no, man. It is. I, I still barely can't believe I did it before. It's so fucking scary. Oh, my God. Oh, tree hats. I got a few tree hats left. There it is right here. The tree hat. I got dark brown and I got tan. Um, we got another order in. They're almost gone. So get your tree hat, some merch on deandelray.com. Tour dates are there. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Join the patreon.com slash Ray. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees. Who do you want in? And uh, also your thoughts on uh, ACDC touring. Is this it? What do you think? Uh, is this going to be it this last year? Who knows? But anyway... Thank you, guys, and congrats one more time to Chris Cheney on the four strings right there out of the Bay Area. Another uh, another killer. And uh, go Niners next year. I love you guys.